This is the Strider's evil cousin, and this is a kangaroo that can help you fight. And these are 25 new Minecraft mobs. But watch out, because some of these might scare you. This new addition to the animal family really could be man's best friend. The Sheba is a new dog that spawns in mountain biomes, but with one helpful touch. See, when you throw any trident or shoot an arrow, the Sheba will run to it to return it to its owner. On top of that, they will also look for especially dark spots and growl at them, so you can tell where to place your next light source. And best of all, they'll even lay on the bed when you sit them down. Have you ever wanted rats in Minecraft? Yeah, me neither. But after seeing Dr. Rat's mod, I was starting to reconsider. These quick moving mobs can be a real help when they're tamed, and you'll see as much when you hit a mob. These packs can annihilate a foe, and hey, they'll even grab the items for you. Or you can give them tools and have them do the jobs like farming for you. Oh, and did I mention that they can fly? Because yeah, with an elytra, they'll take to the skies as well. And just like that, now I'm a full advocate for having rats in the game. Now, snail probably doesn't sound too important, but what these things drop is a different story. See, if we were to feed one of these new snail mobs a red or brown mushroom, they'll munch on it and produce a few tiles of the snail slime. And if we pick that up, we can use it to create a block of this stuff. Much as we do with slime and honey. Except here, if we were to jump to the base of this, you'll see that we stick to it like so, which offers up some new possibilities for traversal, especially parkour. After the village and pillage update, we got the buzzy bees update, but unfortunately, neither of those gave us a beekeeper. So now, thanks to the charm mod, we fixed that. And finally, we have a special profession carved out for our beekeeping business. With the name Soul Vulture, these mobs seem pretty daunting, and I'm afraid that's the case. See, these withered remains add a new hostile mob to fly around our soul sand valleys. And if you see one, you might want to keep your distance, since these things are known to actually start sapping your health if you go through like so, which is not a fun time by any stretch of the imagination, but it might be worth enduring so we can get its drop, because with one of these soul hearts, we can brew up a potion to let us have those same life draining abilities. Minecraft doesn't have a lot of reptiles, so to fix that, let's meet the lizard. If you look around in a jungle or a desert biome, you might see one of these little fellas walking around on the floor. And if you were to feed them with the apple slices you get like so, they'll start to breed and even dig into the ground to lay their eggs, letting us pick them up and even throw them like chicken eggs to get them to hatch, which if you have a neck, can even let us tame them for our own lizard jam sash. If you hear a zombie noise in a soul sand valley, it's not your ears playing tricks, but it's probably the wraith. These monsters are the trapped souls of other mobs, which is why they maybe sound so familiar. It's actually just a low-pitched noise of another mob. And functionally, these guys work like a mix between the husk and the stray, attacking us like a zombie, but giving us the slowness effect instead of hunger, which is a pain to put up with, but you'll want to take them down nonetheless, since these wraiths can actually drop an item called the soul bead. And if you use that, it can pull you toward the nearest nether fortress, which should help you save some time. Minecraft's pigs have never been particularly fast, but that all changes when they get in the mud. See, taken after Minecraft Earth, this muddy pig variant loves to roam around in the mud found in swamps. And lucky for us, it moves pretty fast when it does, which means we can ride them for a new form of agile transportation. Or if that's still not cool enough for you, then just know that you can shear its tulip for some extra dye as well, giving us both a new farm and a new ride. This looks like a spore blossom, but don't get it twisted. This here is the Flutter, a unique mob to the lush cave biomes. And as you can probably tell from looking at it, these things are passive and friendly. Though if you give it a handful of different flowers, it can be tamed to attack nearby enemies, but they don't have much health by default. And I say by default because if you give them a flower pot to wear, they'll gain some armor points as well. This hunk of fur is called a snuffle, and besides being just plain adorable, they had a native mob for the snowy biomes. And hey, they're a lot friendlier than strays, that's for sure. Plus, by using slime balls and magma cream, we can change them around in some ways. For instance, with a slime ball, we can swap through one of four different hairstyles to see. And with a magma cream, we can remove their frost and help them be a little less cold or instead just shear their fur off and you can use it for a new form of decoration block called Snuffle Fluff. Minecraft's beaches don't have a lot of life going on, until today. With these crabs, we get something new to show off next to our turtles. And hey, if you're not a fan of getting pinched, then you can always get rid of them for another food source and crab legs. Or hey, maybe you'll even be lucky enough to get a crab shell that you can brew up into a potion of resilience. Those can be used for some extra knockback resistance. Or at the very least, play a music disc next to it and start up a crab rave. Now at first, a scarecrow might seem like a silly addition. I mean, there's no crows to scare off. But the way this mod does it is that we can make different scarecrows to serve as deterrent different mobs. For an example, if we wanted to scare creepers away from your base, then this ocelot plushie could do the trick just perfectly. Or maybe even use an iron golem miniature to keep the zombies away from your villagers. And hey, with this option, you can scare off all hostile mobs, if you'd like. And with an eight block radius of fear, these little decoys can do some serious work for us. And thankfully so, might I add. It turns out the Strider has a cousin, and these angry fellas are called Straddler. And unlike the usual 
unusual strider, these cousins are native to the Basalt Delta's biome, and they're hostile to Boo, meaning that if we were to get near them, they'll, no joke, launch their own tadpoles as a projectile for damage. Which is pretty brutal, but it is worth defeating one of these things, since if we do, we can get this rare drop and use it to make a literal surfboard for the lava. There are many passive mobs down in the caves. Enter the stone links. Spawning deep underground, these little fellas are pretty shy. But if you sneak up and get the jump on them, we might just get the item that they're carrying. And hey, if you're lucky, you might just get this item from them called a heart of diamond. And with this, we can tame our own stone link to have them hold our items. And we can even change how they look by feeding them different types of stone. All of which makes them an extra handy slot to have for our inventory. If I were you, I'd want to pay attention to these little guys that are down here, the silkworms. Because while they might not look like much, these itty bitty bugs can be a really big help early game. Now first, we'd want to find one of their eggs among the trees, which after we hatch can provide us a source for the silk cocoons that they create. And after you harvest some of those, we can make our very own spindle to have an easy alternative method for string early on. And trust me, that's a lot more pleasant than dealing with yet another cave spider spawner. At first glance, this might look like a phantom, but in actuality, this here is called the Spectre, a new mob found flying around the end void. Seeing the big gaps between end islands, you'll find these space manta rays gliding passively about. And you heard me right, unlike their phantom cousins, these Spectres are completely passive. But that's only the start of the relationship with these guys, since if we were to lure it near, we can actually attack a lead and earn ourselves a painless way across the envoyed gaps, which is nice when you don't have an elytra. Capybaras are an adorable creature, and it turns out they're just as cute when we add them to Minecraft. After taming one of these with any of the items that you see on screen, we'll be able to attach up to two chests to it for some extra storage. And even though we can't ride these around like a pig or a mule, we could still use a lead or a melon slice to have our very own walking double chest. Minecraft Dungeons added in this mob called the Enchanter, and now we've added them to the base game. Here, this guy enchants nearby mobs to make them into more powerful powerful versions, which is intimidating for sure, but I think it also adds a fun challenge to your next raid. And since they're not that threatening by themselves, it makes sense that they try and buff the nearby Vindicators to give you some more trouble. And I think that's a welcome change of pace for the next time you get the Bad Omen effect. Since the 1.19 wild update plans to revamp our swamps, then these otters would fit right in. Based on this modded example, these creatures could offer a whole new reason to explore the rivers and marshlands that we're used to. And with the ability to tame and breed these, they could make for a cute pet to keep for the water as well. I mean, they certainly enjoy following after us in boats, so that seems like a good fit. And if they get the kind of planned features that we see mentioned, such as rideable otters and new variants, this could make for a great pal for the waterfronts. If you're anything like me, you probably haven't heard of a caracal, but by having these wild cats in Minecraft, it's as good of a chance to get familiar with them. For one, these finally give the savanna biome its own unique mob, but on top of that, it also gives us a new feline pet to show off to the world. But the one key difference is that if we were to name one of these a specific easter egg like so, we can get a special caracal costume. And I don't care how many cats Mojang adds in, until they have one that can wear a snorkel like this, I'm not interested. This here is called a tortoise, emphasis on the oar. See, these might look docile, but there's actually more to them than that. And if you attack them the wrong way, these neutral mobs will turn aggressive on us. So to get at the oar in their shell, we'll need to use a pickaxe like so to get the mineral. But be careful, because when they run out, even hitting them with a pickaxe will cause them to do a vicious shockwave attack. So instead, let's stay on their good side, because if you take them home and feed them glowberries, you can farm more ore in a safer way. And that seems better for both of us. This is the new kangaroo mob, and with this kangaroo, we're gonna go to war, much like our war against Fortnite. But first, we're gonna have to tame it. So after giving it enough carrots, we can give them the armor and swords that they need to be ready to fight in the Minecraft versus Fortnite war. And similarly, you can all subscribe to keep pushing us closer and closer to finally passing Fortnite. And together, we can prove once and for all that Minecraft is the strongest game on YouTube. Hundreds of thousands of you have already joined the call so far, so let's keep it... Actually, let's address this other mob that's been flying around. This bald eagle is a new neutral mob for us to play around with. And while it could be intimidating when they swoop down with their claws and try to attack us and others, there's something cool that happens when you tame them. See, after feeding them some fish oil, we earn the chance to equip these falcons with a hood and use them as something of a drone. And then if we line up a mob to hunt, we can direct the eagle to do just that, making for a handy companion and a beginner lesson in falconry. Now this is a tree, and this is a tree stalker. Try not to get the two confused, because this big beast is something to be afraid of. With the six different variants of birch, oak, spruce, acacia, jungle, and dark oak, these things are meant 
meant to mimic the trees that we're used to, but with an aggressive twist. And while I think it's silly for one of these to only drop one log in defeat, I do think it'd be cool to have some kind of ends in the base game. Let's face it, wandering traders are boring and they have bad traits, but goblin traders on the other hand, these ones are worth your time. These guys can spawn in either the caves or the nether, but regardless of where you find them, they'll usually have some serious stuff to buy. I mean, just look at how ridiculous this fishing rod is. Just make sure you don't hit them, otherwise it might get a little agitated. Instead, you should just feed them their favorite food, which is a lot more pleasant for both of us. And honestly, when they can give you traits that have enchantments as high as this, it's worth staying on the good side. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so see if they're right and have a good one, all right?